right. Welcome everyone else as well. My name is Jesse. This is the Elder Council. We play D&D every Wednesday. And I do all sorts of other stuff here. Thursday night is the D&D podcast, which tomorrow night is going to be an awesome episode talking about the crazy weird stuff that is going to be happening in tonight's episode. Um, as someone who runs D- uh, who DMs running the game is plenty well. Thank you for understanding. <laughs> it is it is a lot sometimes. All right, you guys all ready to go in the in the vocal channel here? As soon as I see you guys in there, I'll hop over. How's everybody's day going? I didn't get to stream yesterday, so I didn't uh, catch up with anybody. How's how's everyone's week going? Okay. Super excited to play today. You still see a mimic inside the mimic? Yes, it's. I, I left it there on purpose. <laughs> it's fun. Since we're still battling the the giant mimic, we might as well leave it there, right? All right. Looks like everybody's here. What's up, guys? Hello. Hey, chilling. Everybody doing good today? Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Ready to play some D and D. Yes. Cool. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, uh, I guess if you guys are ready, we'll just uh, jump right into it. We left off last week with Chad uh, grappling in the, in the grasp of the mimic's jaws, fighting it back from trying to bite down and, and swallow Chad whole. Um, it was attacking, and you I think you successfully s- saved it with the exact number that you needed to against its grapple check and fought it off. Am I remembering that correctly? I, I know it was like the middle uh, of combat. It's hard to remember, but uh, I think that I that's... I feel like I did, but like... Yeah. <laughs> so I, that I think that will we'll just say that that was the end of the mimic's turn, and we'll start fresh with the top of initiative with Chewy. Oh, we'll just jump right into it. Okay. If you guys are don't have anything pulled up yet or whatever, no worries. We can take a couple minutes. I'm just gonna use my hand crossbow again. Heck yeah! Fire away. We got some exciting stuff going on in this episode, so I just wanted to get right into it and get this encounter over with so we can get her done because we got some cool stuff coming up. Uh, 19 and a 25. Those both hit. I believe the AC was 17. Yes. So two hits. Seven and four damage for a total of 11. Right on. Anything else from Chewy? Nope. Keep my distance. <laughs> cool. Uh, Deacon was up next, I believe. How's it going, sir? All right. Um, hmm. How you doing over there, Chad? Uh, Chad. Chad's doing just fine. Just wrestling a big old chess boy. <laughs> <laughs> chess boy. <laughs> Since they're they're currently grappled. <clears throat> Uh, it was it was attempting to grapple Chad, but I think he saved, so it's just next to him. I don't think that anyone is currently bound up or anything. Oh, okay, cool. So then I will shoot it with Eldritch Blast two times to see if I can push him back into fire again. Right on, let's see it. Oh. 22 is going to hit for sure. Um, so what? that's uh, 10 feet? Yeah. So it is in the ring of fire and it takes six force damage. Yeah. Cool. Anything else from old Deacon? Um no, I don't think so. Cool. Uh over to Chad. We're moving along quickly. Chad and you are still giant Chad if you remember. Yeah, yeah, I'm big. Uh, so I get like a 1d4 extra on damage. Yes, and you get uh, advantage on your strength stuff, which I think you already get from yeah. your rage, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
All right. Um. So I guess I'll move up uh, two spaces closer. Sure. Uh, right next to the fire, and just kind of like prod at the, prod at the <laughs> the the chest with my with my. Uh, I'm not gonna use that big ass. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna use the the sword. The okay. Elder steel. Sure thing. Yeah. Roll the hit. I think the like this fire is not hot on the the outside, so you could probably just like swing the sword through it and and hit this thing yeah. and not be a problem. Yeah, that's that's good. Cool. It's not hot on the outside. Yeah, yeah. I just kind of want to like keep good. Just kind of trap them in there. So he's like forced into a small spot and into a damage spot, hopefully. Nice. All right. Uh, Swing away. Hit. That's uh, first one hits. All right. Oh, 17 hits as well. Sorry, two two hits. Oh, well, then it's AC is 17. Yes. <laughs> because I also rolled a 16. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I know. I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> um, freaking 200 iq over here no um, <laughs> uh so i get 1d4 on top of what my normal damage is yes so, uh, we'll do that after so it's 2d6 and i'll do the other 2d6 okay so that's uh, 15, 15 total. And uh, both of those are. Uh, so now we add 16. With okay. The rage damage and the bonus. Um, and now we do the two 1d4s. Yep. That's so three damage. 34 total. Yep. Chad is a beast. All right. So you run up and get next to the fire and you cleave through the fire and slice into this thing and as you do you're like doing enough damage that you break open parts of this chest that's kind of containing all of these magic like black rocks and guts and stuff that is inside of it and as they start spilling out the fire is just like heating it up from the inside and like the flames are licking at the the broken parts of the chest and it's looking really rough uh and it's over to max turn Unless you had anything else, Chad. Sorry. Uh, no, no. That was my bonus action was the third attack. Okay. Uh, Mac is going to... 5, 10, 15, 20... 25. He's going to run up and try to stay in between Chad and the Mimic, but close enough to maybe fire off a shot or, or two. Let me see what he can do here cantrip he's going to ray of frost it looks like and he fails and <laughs> that's max turn <laughs> maybe you just gotta scrap that spell from the book mag i don't think it's working he's just a little scared i think um <laughs> all right Mim mimic's uh, turn scene is a failure in yeah <laughs> well he didn't want to cast fireball um the mimic's turn at the beginning of its turn deacon does it take damage from being inside this fire uh i think so i think it's at the beginning okay well uh, did you want to roll that yeah i can cool double check that real quick I think it's if it starts its turn there or if it moves through the fire, right? Uh, That's what I remember you guys saying. Yeah. Yeah, sounds right. Cool. Um, no, it's a uh, end start turn there. Ah, okay, okay. So it'll start its turn and it is just like hemorrhaging guts and rocks and all sorts of stuff. And it is super unhappy with Mr. Chad right now for chopping it, so it's going to just try to grapple you again. Let me see here. I can hear the mimic saying, you're going to burn with me, big boy. <laughs> yeah. That's right. All right. It's going to do its special grappling attack. Uh, 28 to hit. <laughs> oh. It'll probably do it. 
so I basically have to roll a nat 20. Boom. <laughs> no, you oh. uh, you still just have to do a strength check. So I it, it hits you and does damage, and then it will try to grapple you as well. Oh, yeah. Don't I have an advantage? Because... Yes. Oh, yeah. Sweet. Oh, that wasn't much. <laughs> so take uh 18 damage first of all and then it will what kind uh it is it's it's like an attack with its like tongue and mouth and stuff it doesn't have any sort of damage type it's just straight up melee damage so just like regular bludgeoning or something it doesn't even say bludgeoning it's just regular damage so i'm guessing it probably would be counted as bludgeoning so yeah if you want to take uh half of that and yep. it also gets advantage on its grapple checks and it has a plus it got a 18 so you passed Ooh. Oh, man. All right. And I think that's all it can do this round, so it's going to end its turn in the fire. Oh, mama. Good. Let me pull that. It tried to pull me in, but now it's stuck. Yep. <laughs> you should have ran away. Let's see. Let's see what it happens. Oof. 22. <clears throat> All right, so it it tries again to latch on to Chad and pull him in and, and swallow him and, and finish off somebody while it knows that it's going down. And it fails to latch on to Chad, and it just can't overcome the flames as it is trying to struggle to get out and do some damage, and it just burns to a crisp, and it is dead. So nicely done. You've killed the giant... Mimic Tyrant. And as the flames disappear and the Mimic chest corpse uh, burns up into embers, you just see a small pile of those uh, magic black rocks that I think one of you got, right? Uh, yeah, I took one from the, uh, the corpse of the old woman. Right, okay. So yeah, there's a, another pile of those that you can see on the ground, and you find a uh, few hundred gold 200 gold pieces in the rubble and the burned pile of uh, mimic guts nice so whoever would like to or you guys can divvy those up there's another like 10 of those stones and 200 so gold they're, mag they're magical yes as far as you guys know from what uh from what Mac and, and Deacon found out last time, they appear to be some type of alchemy ingredient stone that uh, can increase the power of magical effects. Ooh. And you said there's 10 more of those? Yes, 10 of the stones and 200 gold. However you guys want to split that up, you can you can do that amongst yourselves however you'd like. Uh, giant Chad for some reason has like insane perspective and this like scoops off all, all the gold and just like perfectly divvies it out <laughs> not even having the ability to count past like 10 nice so I guess everybody can add 50 gold to their inventory okay. cool um who wants the rocks? Uh, I guess I'll hold on to them until we can find out what they do, how how they work. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh, as you scoop those up and uh, put them in your bag, Mac says, uh, "I don't, I don't quite know what those are yet, but I'm definitely interested in them. Uh, once we get back, remind me, and uh, we can check those out, and maybe I'll." take those off your hands for a, a good price if, if they're useful to for my work, he says. Sounds good. Cool. And uh, as you collect yourselves and your, your new small pile of loot, uh, you turn around and for a quick second you see the door 
of the gate into the courtyard of Castle Bronze, like, creek shut, like someone just scurried through it. <coughs> it's the lady again. Always the lady. <laughs> yep. Or maybe there's multiple, and it's just like they're like an infestation. Of ladies. Of ladies. <laughs> the worst infestation we could possibly imagine. <laughs> so, who wants to walk in the front? <laughs> Definitely not me. <laughs> Chad says that's like knowing he's like always been in the front every single time. <laughs> okay. Um, how's everybody, okay, I, I, I how's everybody's health? How's everybody's health? Uh, yeah, good not question. Too too bad. I could use a little top up, but I'm in the top like 10, 15. Mac 10. is at about a little bit more than half health. Twenty nine out of forty four. Well, if we want to uh, take a short rest, we can. I can divvy out a little bit of healing and. Not opposed to that. Yeah, I, then Chad can keep watch because he doesn't have any magic spells to rest on. Mac suggests you just heal uh, me up beforehand, and then if you want, but if if you have an extra spell, I don't need it. Just like a ten health or fifteen health. Well, I only used one spell, and I get two per short rest, so I still have one that I can burn before the short rest, and then I'll have two spells again. Nice. Oh, two in the back. Uh, Mac suggests that we pop into one of the tents while we rest did we check all the tents yet yeah you guys did oh. yeah okay. okay so i guess we'll all inhabit like the biggest one cool i'll just assume that you're all inside of there uh it, spoiler but nothing's gonna happen to you while you're resting here um <laughs> so you uh, you all pop inside and yeah deacon what would you like to do um i guess i'll use a cure wounds on uh on Chad, and then uh, Mac can use his hit diet. <laughs> yeah, that's so that's easy. totally fine. Oh yeah, he can rest. True. All right. Um, he's got six hit die, so he's he's probably fine. Cool. So, how much healing? Uh, 27, right? It's the 19 plus 8. Oh, so you just, okay. Um, yeah, when you yeah, upscale that, that it... That bumps me to full. Nice. Perfect. Thanks, man. Mac yeah, is now full health as well. well. Automatically full. Uh, automatically the highest level I can cast. So. Oh, yeah. yeah, Warlocks are the coolest for that. That's so strong. Yep, Mac is fully healed as well. Chewy, how you doing? I take no damage. <laughs> <laughs> That's that crossbow life. Yeah, really. Nice. Cool. Well, you guys are all healed up. You take a, a quick hour to, you know, heal yourselves, uh, collect your thoughts and your loot, and step into the tent for a moment to kind of take a breather, Mac takes a couple potions and bandages him, himself up and uh, Deacon says a couple of uh, prayers and, and casts some spells and heals up Chad and you guys are all good to go. Alright, well after being awake all night Chad is more than ready to walk down into the abyss. And you, uh, you have shrunken back down to normal Chadley size. But I feel bigger than ever. That's right. <laughs> Are you guys ready to, to, to get rid of that old lady who's been bothering us? Yeah. yeah. You mean ignoring us? <laughs> who, does she, like, who does she think she is anyway? Coming in here bothering us? All she, just, all she does is sweep. <laughs> that, that's, that's what she wants us to say. She's just trying to keep this place clean. Yeah, oh, that's what they actually, all do. All the sweet grandmas do. <laughs> before they bite you in the neck. So, actually, before we venture forth, 
um, with the uh, loot that we just divvied up. Mm -hmm. Do we want to put aside a hundred gold of that for a party fund so that we can buy a pearl for identify later on? Uh, if you guys want, I, I'm not like super strict about the whole, uh, spell I ingredients and stuff like that. But if you would like to do that kind of stuff, then I'm more than happy to allow it. If that's what you like, how you want to do it. I'm mostly, I'm just like, if you have the, if you have the free time and you're like in back in a safe place like a city or whatever like i just assume that you'll you'll find a way to identify your stuff and <clears throat> well i mean I, I have the identify spell right yeah I just didn't have the pearl for it so i i'm just going to assume like usually the way that i play this kind of stuff is like as a as a spell caster who knows that spell i would just assume that you have the ingredients in your in your uh, possession you know but if you for role play reasons or anything like that want to you know take the time to actually go out and procure that stuff then i'm fine with that but i'm i'm not gonna like hold it to you hold you guys to it if you want to just you know when you have a free time and you guys are in like a decently good spot you can you can just do it if you want oh, okay cool well does anyone have anything they want to identify it it takes what is it like 11 minutes of the ritual like an extra 10 minutes or yeah i think it's i think it's 10 minutes uh be aware that some of the uh this is just gonna be meta like i don't want you guys to just have to waste your time and this is why i don't like need to make you guys waste ingredients or anything some of the magic items that you have found <laughs> in in this place are going to be unidentifiable until later time get out. yeah oh. Like one uh, particular ring that is fused onto your finger. Sure. Or, or an axe. <laughs> the axe is identified now. It's uh, oh, okay. That is Cracklash's cleaver, and it's a it's a plus one. I think it was plus one axe that does one d twenty damage, and you take half of the damage that it inflicts. Oh. So it's cursed, right? Uh, yeah, kind of. It's it's like uh, <clears throat> it's so heavy and and like earth shatteringly powerful that you you just take damage from like the shock wave of the thing. But yeah, if you if you do twenty damage with it, you take ten. Yeah, I think it's a uh, plus two. Plus two. Okay. Yep, that makes more sense. And like, what the hell? Look what I accidentally roll. <laughs> oh yeah. Nat twenty, which that would be two d twenties, two d twenties for damage. That'd be insane. I rolled two d twenties by accident, guys. Yeah, <laughs> that's mine for the rest of the campaign. Yeah, now you're just gonna you roll. Wasted. You're gonna roll all ones. <laughs> you wasted it. <laughs> it was a misclick. Axe of Cracklash the Savage. Okay. So, onwards. What would you guys like to do? head on through the gate right yep let's go all right you exit your resting tent and uh cautiously approach the gate into the courtyard of castle bronze you <coughs> see the super tall walls that uh, everything still has the slight faint gold kind of translucent shimmer on it and occasionally you'll see a little bit of like a a like a glitchy look like the the translucent shimmer will flicker a little bit and and disappear and then ripple back into existence and <clears throat> it kind of makes the wall looks like it's it's moving a little bit and you see the castle inside the courtyard and uh you push open one of the sides of the the gate door and enter into the courtyard And as you do, you see just kind of what looks like a big empty courtyard area, more of like a dirt ground where there would be like, 
you know, people in a traditional castle, there would be maybe soldier trainees practicing their fighting or some like vendor stalls, some of the higher end vendors that aren't just in the normal city. They're kind of like within the castle walls for protection for more valuable goods. But it seems to be relatively empty in here other than this giant statue that you can see in front of you. That, Don't uh, look at it. <laughs> Chad, you can immediately recognize this statue is uh, the Lady Rosiel that you met in Chance before. And she is figured in this statue, very regal and, and noble looking, standing with this uh, giant like staff. And on top of the staff is a gigantic ruby. And the statue is in the middle with uh, some carts and kind of rocks sitting around it. And, oh, thanks for the host, Luca. Appreciate it, man. Um, some of the rocks and debris around the statue look like they are still left here from when this place may have been constructed. Like the ground and stuff is really just like dirt and dust. And it doesn't seem to be as like clean and put together as the castle looks from the outside and you can see the statue is coated in that translucent glow as well and everything is kind of flickering and shimmering in here and on the other side of the statue you see uh, a very large and like muscly powerful strong looking half orc man uh, seated atop a horse and he's holding a gigantic axe over his shoulder and he's just kind of stoically sitting on the horse behind the statue not moving uh chad whispers over to the to the guys uh i think that uh is rosiel i know her and the thing is maybe that is her and she just got turned to stone I mean, why is there, why is there a ruby in the statue? I mean, that's pretty valuable, dude. <laughs> as and as you are uh, kind of pouring over the statue and looking at it and explaining to everybody that you know who that figure is, you can see the the person behind the statue. This this mounted half orc man. It looks like Cracklash. Didn't he die? He didn't die? He did. Well, as far as you know, you saw him get his head crushed by the the uh, gladiator ring runner. Uh, and his get... face looks totally normal and intact. He looks, yeah, just totally normal. He also is covered in like the, the shimmering, translucent kind of glowing effect that you see everything else has around here. All right, guys, I have a theory <laughs> that that is, I mean, I know it's Cracklash. That's the illusion that I'm seeing because of the mist, but underneath it is probably just zombie Cracklash because I saw him die, yo. He's dead as hell. That's not real Cracklash. And why would he be working for this? Are you guys ready to fight? Thank you for the six-month resub. Blitchy, welcome to the stream. You and Luca, thank you guys so much. Sorry for interrupting. Chad? So, does <clears throat> the statue detect as magic in any way other than the normal sheen of illusion, conjuration, or whatever it was? Um, No other than it's just like totally everything in this courtyard that you can see, the like the floor, the... The, as the, as you come into the courtyard and courtyard and like shut the gate door behind you, you can see in front of you just this open courtyard area, and then back behind it is the front wall, what appears to be the front wall of the castle, and another gate that enters into the building of the castle. Everything in here is just totally like off the charts, like shimmering with the like illusory magic like shine to it. And the statue, and in particular, the ruby on top of the scepter of the statue is just kind of like the focal point of that. It seems to all be like emanating from this area. Maybe more importantly, is there anything that doesn't detect as magic? Yeah. Um, 
not as far as you can tell it doesn't seem like it seems like everything is just constantly like shimmering and flickering and like a little bit of that weird glitchy kind of shimmering look to it and it all just seems to be kind of flowing out of this this central area you don't see anything that's not doing that You said it was emanating from the ruby. It, it you would appear to be. It, it would appear to be like the statue in general is kind of like the brightest spot of the of the glow. Like in detect magic terms, if that's what you're doing, then like all of the the trail of magic that's all over this place is like leading up to this statue. It seems, and as you all. Uh, kind of cautiously stand around and, and try to think about what's going on here and look at this thing, you see the the mounted horseman start to slowly make his way towards you. Spread out, guys. And he's, he doesn't appear to be, like, galloping or anything. He's just, like, <coughs> begins to slowly walk towards you. So I'm going to try something that's probably not going to work. <laughs> okay. Let's try it anyway. Um... I'm going to try to use Dispel Magic on the ruby. On the ruby? Well, yeah. That's okay. What was, yeah. The stuff was emanating from Sure, that. I was just making sure that. that that's... Yeah, absolutely. Go. Uh, do you do you have to roll or anything? It just happens, right? Um. So it just happens for anything fourth level or lower. Um, if it's a higher level spell, I would have to make an ability check. Okay, make uh, make the check then. Is it Arc is it Arcana check or? Uh, so it just says an ability check using my spellcasting ability, and then the DC is ten plus the spell level. Okay, uh, let me let me figure out what level spell this is, and then I will let you know. It's pretty pretty high. Um, yeah, go ahead and make your make your check. So I guess it sounds like it's just a straight charisma check then. Since it's just... Yeah, and I don't think you I don't know if you get to add anything to that. It's just a check, right? It's not a yeah. save or anything. Uh, yeah. Yeah, just a straight up check with your with your charisma, I guess. <laughs> all right it's gonna be well plus four so that's the 13. so it would have to be a third level uh, spell or lower right uh, yeah which okay. i would have already dispelled so, so as you uh how do, how does it look when you cast dispel magic do you just use your hands do you use like your focus what 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 is the process for this for you um Just so I can accurately describe exactly what happens here. It's got vocal and somatic parts, so I'm probably, you know, chanting and praying and wiggling my fingers. <laughs> sure. So as as uh, what appears to be Cracklash, which was the former mentor to Chad and the older party while they were in the gladiator pit, this this person that appears to be Cracklash starts to slowly walk forward towards you. Uh, Deacon quickly thinks to try to dispel whatever sort of illusion is going on here and says a few words and fires off the spell at this ruby and everything goes black. All of your vision, no one can see anything. It's totally silent as if you were all just transported into just absolute nothingness. And when your vision comes back, Cracklash appears to be gone and... This, you're going to have to do a little bit of theater of the mind here with me for a second because I don't have any way of making a map of this. When you come back, the courtyard that you were in uh, is no longer the way that it appeared before. You're now in this just solid black room that is lined by black walls and the, sta the same statue of Rosiel is in the middle. But now on each of the four walls... There is a mirror 
just a standard, like, six-foot-tall, human-sized mirror in the center of each of the four walls on each side of the room with the statue in the middle. Uh, and you're all... So we'll still just use this map for the room, just pretend that uh, each of the sides of the map is a wall with a mirror directly in the middle. And... You regain your sight, and it, Deacon, you felt like a flash of intense, like, confusion as soon as you, like, you you fired off your Dispel Magic, and you know kind of what happens when you try to do this on a high-level spell and it fails. Like, it just kind of fizzles out and doesn't do anything. But it felt like this time when you, like, just targeted this, this uh, scepter with Dispel Magic, you felt this intense, like, confusion and all, almost, like, a pain, but you just felt how, in, like, inadequate the spell was, and it kind of almost deflected back at you, and you felt this strange disturbance that, like, changed the area that you were in, and now you guys are back, and you're in this black room with the four mirrors and the statue in the middle. What was that, guys? <laughs> I told you it wasn't going to work. <laughs> Chad would have suggested you shoot it with the crossbow or something. You, you did well, something. That was plan B. Well, now it's plan A. But I'm pretty sure that's probably the artifact that we're after. You can still shoot it out of its position. <laughs> jostle it out of its little slot. Well, it might Get be out of here. staff, not cool. just the ruby. As, as you are looking at it, it, it's like the entire scepter is also part of the statue, and like the ruby is like part of the scepter. It's all like, it's all part of this statue. So is it all, like, is the ruby a ruby, or is it all made of stone? Uh, it's, it's an actual, like, ruby. But is, is the scepter stone, or is it... It appears to be. Here? What if we just break off her arm? <laughs> Does that thought put Chad into extreme confusion and pain? <laughs> uh... No, I, I think you probably are just confused at being in like a new location out of nowhere. Solid black room with a mirror on each wall and a statue in the middle. But nothing um, just from thinking a thought. Is is all the is the area covered in the weird little shimmer still or is that not Um clear? No. It's all you see, like, when you look down at the floor, you don't see, like, a black floor. You just see blackness. Like, there is no substance to even see. It's it's essentially, like, imagine you're just floating in, like, the blackness of space. The statue's in the middle, and then there's a mirror on each, each direction. Like, north, south, east, and west, there's one mirror on each, each wall. Um... I'm going to throw up detect magic to see if there's nothing happens. Like nothing ha detects as magic or nothing happens. L literally nothing happens. Hmm. I cast light on the, my rod or my quarterstaff. Okay, yeah, it's you have this aura of light emanating off of you. Um, okay, so magic still works. That's that's good. <clears throat> yep, doesn't appear to be uh, some sort of anti magic field or anything like that. The light doesn't uh, doesn't reveal any sort of hidden floor or anything like that. It's just seems to just be like a black room. Can Chad give his thoughts here? <laughs> sure. Chad thinks that before, since we did things your in order of what you wanted last time, let's do Chad's way this time. 
Let's not interact with the mirrors at all first because Chad's worried that he's going to have to fight himself. And nobody's stronger than Chad. <laughs> so we're going to be in for real trouble. So, I mean, what was in common with last place and this place is that the statue. So whatever is like trying to trick our mind or is trying to like prison us, they're going to be pretty pissed off when we kill their statue. They must really like it. Hmm. So you want to like try and mess up the statue because Chad will just chip away at it all day. He's not going anywhere near those mirrors. Mac is like hanging off of your tail, practically shaking with fear, Chad, and he is just like shaking you, like D do whatever you got to do. Right, let's get the hell out of here. What's going on? And he's just like super freaked out. But oh, by the way, Mac, when uh, I was doing watch, uh, oh yeah, you were sleeping, weren't you? I was just going to ask if you made any potions, but you, you were sleeping. He, uh, during the short rest, he was just like bandaging himself up and stuff, but he, I believe he does not have any extra potions on him right now. All right, well, normal size Chad can chip away at this. Okay. I mean, I, if you guys are just going to watch... Chad is just going to go up, and he's going to hit this thing as hard as he can. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, me... Oh, yeah. Make an attack roll. Okay. I'm just going to take a seat. A seat <laughs> just sure. So, essentially, the room is as big as this courtyard like that you were standing in. Just c continue pretending that this map is the black room and just on each of the walls there's one mirror with the statue in the middle uh chad you rolled a 20 total what are you attacking with uh a war hammer two-handed okay so you are you like just bringing it down on the statue yeah i'm just trying to like make some dust all right so while while he's doing this i'm gonna be watching this in one of the reflections on the mirror okay uh so chad you pull up the warhammer and you uh you attempt to just wail on this thing and bring it down like overhead smash on the statue and as you do deacon you're watching this in the mirror and what you see is chad just swinging a warhammer into thin air and Chad, the Warhammer just goes right through the statue and just slams into the ground, and you just get the like ringing reverberation. And uh, Deacon, in the mirror across from you, and it's you're standing like let's let's say that Deacon, you're standing like wherever, and you're looking at the mirror directly across the room from you. Mm -hmm. You don't see yourself in the reflection in this mirror. You see Chad, and you see of the ruby scepter floating in midair and no statue. So was it, did it always look like that in the uh, reflection or was it only when he went to attack it? Uh, how do you know? Did you guys inspect any of the mirrors? <laughs> well, I mean, I like, as I was watching it. Yeah. You never, you never saw the statue in the mirror. It, it didn't like disappear. It just, you didn't see it at all. So we'll say at the the mirror at, to the north, you saw the reflection of Chad and the Warhammer and the Ruby Scepter, but no, no statue. Hey, what's the big idea? Hey, Chad, look at the mirror to the north. What do you see? I'm not falling for your tricks, <laughs> mirror man. <laughs> 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 All right, Chewy, what do you see? What do I see? Do you look in the mirror to the north? Sure. You see Chad standing there with his Warhammer. And no statue. Else in the room. You, well, you the also scepter. see the ruby scepter floating in the air. Um, if you okay. walk in front of the mirror, you don't see a reflection of yourself in it. Oh, okay. I look to the mirror on the uh, east wall. Okay, as you walk in front of it, you see your own reflection pass in front of the mirror, and you see the ruby scepter floating in the middle of the room. Okay, I see my own reflection on the east one, but I didn't see my reflection on the north one. Yes. 
And I'm assuming I, mean, I see the same thing in that mirror as well. When you look into it, yeah, you see Chewie and the Scepter, but not yourself. All right. What about the South Mirror? You turn and you see Mac reflected <clears throat> in this one and the Scepter floating in the middle of the room. And then I assume the West is me and the Scepter. You are correct. So we kind of share this information? Yeah, if you guys want. Yeah. Whatever you take, I'll tell them take what of I saw. it. I am going to cautiously poke the West Mirror with my quarterstaff. Okay. Um, as you do, it kind of ripples like uh like it's a strange like like a liquid metal okay i go and do the same thing to the south mirror doesn't move at all it just feels like a mirror oh man i don't want to go inside this (laughs) (laughs) so i um i check my mirror the same way on the east wall yeah it like ripples and moves when you try to touch it and i go to the north mirror and check it the same way nope oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh chad guess what? <laughs> That's what i have to do i um hmm. <laughs> how many rations do i have here i can set just sit here oh <laughs> You guys feel free to talk it out amongst yourselves, whatever you want to do. So I I take uh, Iatos uh-huh. over to to my mirror. Yep. And kind of like dip one of his his wings into the mirror to see if it passes through. <laughs> it does. You 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 also see his reflection in the mirror. Okay. Um. In that case, I am going to just dip his head into the mirror <laughs> okay and then look through his eyes okay you just see a solid wall of golden like illusory fog the same color as the like the translucent coating that was over everything it's just like a wall of like starlight just shining right in your eyes as you look through all right i pull him back out his head is gone. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad I didn't try that with myself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, he, he appears to be fine, if not a little confused. His head is gone. <laughs> That's good. So what do you guys think about this? Well, I, I share what I saw through his eyes on the other side. Yeah, Chad doesn't like that nightmare world. Why don't we why don't we try and mess with the staff cuz the staff is always here and the thing is invisible. It could just be because uh he didn't go all the way through though. It might have just been he was kind of <laughs> just being halfway through whatever would have happened when he stepped through completely, so. <laughs> Uh, Chad, Chad's going to try and yank on the thing, actually. He's going to yank on the staff. He's going to see if he can do it. So, w- from where you're standing, like, you can see the statue in front of you, Chad? Yeah. You're going to try to, like, pull the pull the scepter out of the statue, or? Yeah, I'm just going to jump up and just grab it, because I, I imagine the whole thing is, like, you know, I, it, I can go through it since I swung through it, and he doesn't see anything, so. Yeah, he says he sees you, the, you jump the up rod. and try to grab the rod, and it, your hand just passes through it, right? Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and send uh, Iotos through the, through the mirror. Okay. Just then, just all the way through? Yeah, and then scry through his eyes to see what he sees. Alright, uh, so he, you just pop him through the mirror, and you attempt to scry through him, and you have no contact. Oh. Alright, I attempt to unsummon him, and then resummon him again. Is that a ritual that you can do? 
No, it's part of the th like you can pop him into a like a pocket dimension and right. then take him back out and just resummon him like at will. Yeah, basically. Okay. Like if he if he were to die, I would have to like actually recast the, the spell. Ritual. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's fine. He he comes back. So. <laughs> so I I go over to Chewy. Sure. And I'm like, hey, so I think you you understand that that we're gonna have to go through these stupid mirrors, right? <laughs> Yes, unfortunately. <laughs> and, and you know that it, it, it's looking like we're each going to have to go through our mirrors. And Chad is not going to go willingly. So <laughs> I'm probably going to need your help getting him through his mirror. Hmm. Let me see. <laughs> what is Chad doing during all this, by the way? We're talking. He's like completely else. fascinated with the, the uh, magic of illusion, and he's just putting his hand through the the the, the stone. And he's just like he's just mind boggled. He's just like swimming through it, poking his head in and out, like shooting his arm in and out. Like, Whoa! <laughs> making it look like she has a tail, just like all the silly stuff. Nice. Okay, that totally makes sense. Uh, Mac is now kind of over off on his own away from you guys looking into his own mirror like just looking at the reflection with the empty room and he's doing the same thing like poking at the mirror that you can see kind of ripples as he touches it. Could I try like a arcana check or something to see if I'm familiar with like any kind of magical mirrors that work like this at all <laughs> uh like if this is like a familiar thing to me or sure you can you can make the check um before you do are you familiar with any magical mirrors that work like this like you or your character before you roll um i mean i <laughs> personally not not as deacon like you know, mirrors as like a transportation doorway thing is like a pretty common trope. Sure. But, um, I I don't know if they are like common in this world necessarily. So okay, I don't know that whether or not Deacon. Would... Yeah, go ahead and make an Arcana check. Fourteen. Deacon, uh, I think like you guys are all from just normal like fantasy world D, D like forgotten realms ish places uh i would imagine places with pretty high magic like there's definitely you know teleportation circles and probably some type of magic mirrors and stuff like that i don't think that high level magic users like mac and deacon i don't think you would be like just amazed like you would just have no idea what's going on right you'd probably figure it out just like you did well like i, I mean I, I would assume that deacon would at least be like oh it's just some kind of magical thing but i didn't know if he'd be like oh yeah these are manufactured by blamco right, right. Uh... <laughs> this is a magical mirror of zorn or whatever yeah no it, he doesn't like know the the brand and spell of the mirror sure He's, he probably just figures like oh it's like a, some type of magic mirror but that's that's about it it's not like these are like the most common form of teleportation they're manufactured by zogmoth the world ender uh, yeah <laughs> everyone knows that i did so did you get that latest zogmoth's uh mirror <laughs> man i did but then it opened up a portal to the hell <laughs> 
Yeah, mine sent me straight to hell. I had to like try and send it back, but then I had <laughs> I had to get out of hell first. That was and that was a whole that was a whole deal of hell. They made me I mean. pay the return. And then you shipping. went through hell a second time when you had to deal with their customer <laughs> yeah. service. I know. Yeah, exactly. then I had to get my passport. I had to live there and get my passport in hell. Oh my god. What a what an ordeal. I had to wait in the DMV line for ever literally forever. <laughs> and right when i was about to get out i was waiting in line i said jesus christ and that's another two years i mean come on wah, wah. all right so so i kind of share with mac like our our thoughts of that we're gonna have to each go through from here sure and thanks for the host vampire keeping it on the on the dl so that chad doesn't hear yeah so mac has been like prodding around kind of inspecting the mirror like feeling the seams and stuff and it just seems like they're just solidly you know part of the kind of void wall on the edges of the room and he turns and sees that you and chewy are kind of discussing all this stuff and walks over and you you give him the the lowdown and he agrees he's like yeah i'm doesn't really seem like there's any other way out of here. And uh, that's that's kind of what I was thinking too. Like each one of us has our own mirror that we're gonna have to walk through. And he does not seem excited about it either, but he's looks like he's slowly being a little bit less scared, but he doesn't want to be here. How far away from the mirror is Chad currently? Like how many feet? Uh, it's about the same size as the actual room, like from the middle to the each edge of the map. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, about 30 feet from any one side of the room. I need to get him closer to the mirror. <laughs> you guys even tried to talk to him. Be, if need be, I can blast him through it. <laughs> well, if, we, if we talk to him, he's just going to assume that we're mirror doppelgangers and <laughs> avoid us. <laughs> yeah. Interesting predicament. <laughs> so I got a quick out of character question. Yeah, absolutely. Not, well, actually, it's actually in character. But I want the potions that Mac gave us. I have one. Okay. Do they look special anyway? Does he have his name on them? Anything? Like <laughs> um, they are they branded? No, yeah, basically. they just look like a like a glass kind of grenade shaped you know glass vial with a cork in the top and uh kind of gross looking liquid inside so it would be recognizable um i i guess to to chad yeah like he's taken a couple of them by now he probably would see a gross liquid it looks like soup it's just like some brown <laughs> yeah soup. it's like we're a, a regular like grading greater healing potion which is what mac is like trying to replicate they're like this like rich blood red like color which is like easily recognizable at a nice establishment as like a really fine quality healing potion max version of that looks like it's got like chunks in it and stuff it's just like oh, like, like, <laughs> like gravy broth it's, or something it's like it's like melted crayons and some of the ingredients oh. like some of the herbs and and meats and and rocks and stuff that went into it like are still not really ground up all the way it's like pretty gross it's like, like he was supposed to like you. filter like, it and like yeah he just like took the just, super like, fast way of making yeah. it and it's like really shoddy craftsmanship but it, it gets the job done ish if i was thinking about giving this away i am definitely giving this thing away <laughs> it's, it's basically like the uh the step in winemaking right after they stomp on the grapes with their feet <laughs> yeah. yeah like if you if you just dr drank it out of the barrel while they were still stomping on it that's kind of the same <laughs> fungus potion yeah it's not FDA approved, that's for sure. <laughs> it's MAC approved. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I lean over to Deacon. I said, you think we can bribe him to go through it? Mm, maybe. Or should, but... I put the po should I put the potion over there and point it out and let him <laughs> do your thing? Oh, that might be an idea. Just 
put it down close and then just be like, hey, look, Max <laughs> dropped one of his potions. <laughs> okay. Hey, let's try it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna stealthily walk over there and drop the potion that found his mirror. Sure, I think from what uh, Chad explained, he's pretty distracted, kind of playing with this statue. You, okay. you just kind of walk around the edge of the room and set a potion in front of the north mirror and walk back to the group. Okay. Okay, what do we do now? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess I'll say it. I'll say it. Hey, where'd that potion come from? Like, uh, ooh, Mac must have dropped it. Mac, you drop a potion over there, did you? Hey, Chad. Uh, Chad, Chad potion... looks up from like... There's a potion like, in the ...of the dress. He just like comes out. He's just like, whoa! Oh, what potion? And then he like turns around and he looks. And he's like, oh! Mac, uh, yeah, Mac is like, oh, I must have dropped that. You can have that if you want, Chad. Say, like, oh, oatmeal and gravy, my favorite. I mean, Max delicious. I mean, Max health potion. <laughs> uh, so as you run up and bend over to grab the potion, I'm assuming everyone is gonna run up and try to push him in. Um, I mean, I was just gonna. <laughs> Blast. Eldritch <laughs> Blast. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It was a 16 and a 21. What's your AC, Chad? You're being attacked by your own party. <laughs> and before I shoot him, I, I wait for him to like pick up the potion so he can at least get the potion out of the deal. Okay, yeah, that's nice. And and I, I say I say, Chad, I'm sorry for this, and I promise I'm not a doppelganger. So the first blast. Uh, uh, what's your AC, Chad? 13. Okay, so the first one hits, so you don't actually have to hit him with the second one. Okay. And he gets blasted 10 oh. feet f forward. <laughs> I'm sorry. 10 feet oh, forward the into the mirror. He has a magic potion to take. <laughs> so take 10 damage, Chad. <laughs> oh my gosh, Wait, you guys. Wait, is this the thing that I have, like... Uh, Resisted the forest patch. Yes, yeah. nice. I do. Nice. I, I do this with coming handy. I forgot that you had that. That's awesome because there's like very few yeah. creatures are resistant to force damage. That's awesome. Yes. Nice. So take five damage, and you guys see Chad just kind of tumble forward through the mirror and disappear. Okay. Well, I guess I'm heading through mine. Yep. Chad. I'll head through mine as well. Okay. You guys all just pop on through <laughs> no, so what else to do all right kind of um, a nod to mac and, and so through. yeah you guys all kind of like you quickly blast chad through and then everyone like kind of runs over to their respective mirror you all nod at each other and everyone steps through at the same time you pop through the mirrors and you appear back in the courtyard and you are each in your own corner of the courtyard directly where you're standing on the map here <clears throat> and let me just make sure i get this on the stream well enough one second here so everyone can see i say i'm sorry for that chad but it was the only way to get you through the mirror <laughs> <laughs> shut up mirror man i don't trust anything <laughs> in this world <laughs> At least you got a potion out of the deal. One second, guys. How would you know that, Mirror Man? Because you I gave in you the cahoots. Potion. You told them. They're all against <laughs> me. Let me find my. Oh, here we go. So yeah. as you as you come in, Chad, you you teleport in first, and you stumble over. You uh, you don't go too far through the mirror. You just stumble in a few feet and fall onto the ground and quickly stand back up. But as you do, you see directly in front of you where the statue is in the center of the courtyard. You see Chad. And Deacon, you and your owl friend pop in and see the exact same thing in front of you. You see yourself staring right back at you. 
also do I see Doppel Chad as well? Yeah, you all see all of these all of these characters. So everyone sees each other. Yeah. You you join in and you see, you know, it just looks like an exact copy of your party is standing in the uh, center of the courtyard. <coughs> I warned you guys about this. <laughs> See, what happens is, even if we win this battle, we'll never truly know if one of us is just a mere man who won and made it through. Uh, and as you come into the courtyard and you teleport back you know, away from the black room, uh, you do see the scepter of the statue is kind of like glowing and, and looks like it's no, no longer made of stone. And the... Uh, the party of you guys in the center, as soon as you all teleport in, they all look up and uh, start to move forward, and that's going to be initiative. Yay. <clears throat> Roll for these guys as well. One second here. So this is going to be kind of a different combat than we've run before, at least on my side. I don't know if it should be too different from your guys' perspective. It might be a little bit more engaging and interesting. Um, I tried a new way of designing my own like homebrew creatures instead of just you know using the DM's guide or monster manual or whatever. I kind of tried to make these more action oriented and I took a little bit from like the new Matt Colville video that he put out about designing your own encounters and stuff. And this fight, uh, this is like the first time I've tried this new kind of method of designing monsters and encounters and stuff. It very, very, very well could be the like most difficult combat encounter that we've done so far. So be careful. I, just warning you guys now, I have no idea how balanced it is. Uh, it's not going to be easy, I'll say that. These are, like, legitimately, it's, you guys are fighting copies of yourself, so. Enough meta, I won't, uh, I won't just meta spoil you guys, all that stuff. Just wanted to say this is all new, it's not balanced yet, I have no idea it's, if it's gonna work, so I apologize if you all die, but just do your well, best. <laughs> as, as long as Apple Mac is as bad as regular Mac. <laughs> and unfortunately, I don't think that that is going to be the case. <laughs> oh, God. All right, uh, everyone, what was your initiative? If you could all just uh, name them off for me. Uh, six. Chad That's is with six. Advantage. Yikes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I had 18. All right, uh, Mac, from you guys, got an eight. So I tell everyone, focus on the other me first. <laughs> you just, just shout that out as soon as you teleport in? Well, like, as soon as they Kill the start, other me. Like, so then they... Wouldn't the clone also do that? And then they both just say, kill the other me, and then we're all just like looking at the two of them. <laughs> Is that not what happens? Hang on one second. <laughs> all right, there's a lot to track behind the scenes this time, so just getting everything totally set up and ready, and then we should be good to go here. All right, so you guys teleport in. I tell in. Mac to throw a fireball down on that statue right now <laughs> before they get away from it. <laughs> perfect. Perfect grouping. So as soon as yeah. you all, you jump through the mirrors, you all come in, Chad, you're stumbling, you stand up, you see these these doppelgangers appear to notice you and start to try to attack. Um, Deacon yells out, you know, kill the kill the copy of me first so they don't have a you know the healer and the doppelganger deacon looks up and 
in the exact same like tone and cadence and everything just copies the exact same thing that Deacon said. And of course he does. The other the clone Chewy like opens his mouth and this really strange like technical fuzz glitch noise comes out and it's just like like uh the like TV testing noise, like when they're doing like an emergency alert, like the weird fuzz screeching noise. It just sounds like that, and it's this weird glitch. And then they all move to attack. Uh, Deacon from you guys' party, uh, you're up first on initiative. All right. You quickly uh, realize what's going on as soon as you all enter here, and you shout out to focus fire their Deacon first, and then you you get to act. Hmm. So they're all. Hmm. <laughs> this, this might be a good. You know, I was going to use hex and and keep hex up, but they are in just too perfect a place. Let me see. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. I mean, they're in a 20-foot diameter, which just happens to be the wall of fire diameter. I mean... Oh, yeah. That's... Uh, yeah. I, I, yeah, I keep, I'd do I it. I keep wanting to, like, do, like, a hex build, but, man, that's <laughs> really good. Um, yeah, I'm going to uh, throw up a, a ring of 20-foot diameter... Uh, around them and uh, all right focus it inward let me see if I can draw up another one of those don't remember how I did that last time alt for a circle cool so there's a wall of fire around the group. And, and I think since it's going to go through their squares, like I think that probably get um, a deck save. But... What do you mean? Well, because like, they're right on the 20 foot. Well, I guess if it's on the outside of their square. like it, It's up to you whether or not they're it's going to be considered cast on on top of them or if they're going to be within the circle at that point um if i think that they're probably you can make it so that they're all contained within it um okay if you want to position it you know so it's somewhere on top of one of them then that's fine if you want to do that um no that's right. let me all actually like place them all in an actual square but <clears throat> all right so on their turn if any of them end their turn inside they'll take damage or if they walk through it right yep okay cool anything else from you movement uh, bonus actions anything like that uh no <clears throat> okay let me make sure i have everything here all right, so you throw up this wall of fire, and as soon as you do, they all kind of just look at each other, and you hear that weird, like, glitchy noise again, and they seem to be communing, communicating to each other through that noise. And uh, the, the clone, the illusion deacon, takes his turn, and at the beginning of his turn, anyone within 10 feet of him... Gains 1d6 temporary HP. So. Plus 3. So each of them gets plus 3 temp HP really quickly. I want to get me that ability. Dang. Ooh. Yeah, dude, I'll stand next to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and he is going to <clears throat> attempt to move towards. These are doppelganger pluses. Hang on one second. Let me get Chad out of there. 
All right, he's going to move through the fire and attempt to move to um, right about here, I believe. And he is going to cast Eldritch Blast targeting Deacon. Uh, 27 to hit. And a 12. Uh, the 12 is a miss. Okay. So. And he takes 26 fire damage walking through the fire. Okay. Take that off of him. All right. So he hits you with one Eldritch Blast. You're going to take four damage. Four force damage, and you're going to be pulled 10 feet closer to him. Pulled? Pulled. Oh, pushed. Uh, there, well, there's invocations that do both for warlocks. Uh oh. Yeah. Okay. He has the one that pulls. Yeah, if you, you can also just like imagine that like, he originates it from a behind and it pushes them towards him. That's a good idea. Uh, and let's see. He's going to take a bonus action. And heal himself 2d6 for a total of 6. And it's going to be Chewie's turn. I am going to. Uh... Go down four and over. Over how many? Four. Okay. Okay. And then I'm going to use my crossbow. Sure. And shoot it. The Doppelganger Deacon. Okay. And I'm going to spend a key point so I can do it three times. Alrighty. The second one there, 17. You rolled a 13, 17, and an 8. Uh, yeah. The second one hits. All right, he takes a crossbow bolt to the back and takes 38 damage, or takes four damage. I like 38 better. <laughs> yeah, you can take 38. It's <laughs> looking at my notes here. I don't know. <laughs> he takes 38 damage from one crossbow shot. That'd be insane. Uh, anything else from Chewy? Bonus actions? Uh, any more movement? I think you're all good. Um... Yeah, I'm all good. Okay. Uh, so, Chewie, you kind of ru <coughs> rush over as you... you. This is all happening super quickly, you guys remember, and as soon as you get in here, Deacon just yells out, like, focus fire on clone me, and all of this happens. They start casting spells at each other. Uh, Chewie, you run over to shoot the clone of Deacon and Chad the the deacon or the the doppelganger chad uh rushes out of the fire and can I go, what's that may I, go, may I go ahead and move next go ahead and move closer to uh yeah uh the little guy I so i i've got a question though because earlier i cast light on my quarter staff sure does the doppelganger have light on his quarter staff he does not Ah, so remember that people do not shoot the one with quarter staff. <laughs> the okay. non shiny quarter staff one. You are safe. How much? How much movement do you have left, Chewie? Where would you like to move to? I see. You moved forty, right? Eight squares. Yeah. Well, if I move diagonally, is that the same? 
How much do you have left? Well, I can move 40. Did I move 40? Yeah, you did. Okay, then I can't move no more. Okay. So, as all of this is happening, the doppelganger Chad just, like, jumps through the flames. So, roll your uh, fire damage against Chad. Okay. And he is just, like, Hulk mode. Like, he looks, as you guys would recognize, Chad looks when he is in this, uh, this barbarian rage. 25. 25. All right. And he is going to immediately jump out and he looks at Chad and he just lets out this immense roar of ice breath and it just coats the wall behind Chad and and just sprays these like diamond like shards of ice all over the wall. And... Not the face, not our <laughs> beautiful face. Uh, Chad, make a deck save, please. Okay. Um, I think I should have some extra deck saves, but probably not. Um, oh, I have an advantage on dexterity saving throws against fa effects you can see, such as traps yes. and spells. Yes. Yep. Baller. All right, let's try twice. That's good. That one's not as good. Cool. Yeah, you. so you save from this, so you are going to take half damage. So take half of 13, so take six. Do I take half from it as well because I'm Ice Dragon and it's cold? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately... This does not even feel like regular, like your ice breath when you use it. You would, you would, you would kind of expect to feel the same thing, and it, it feels just like sharp, cold glass, and it just slices into you. Uh, and after he shoots you with the ice breath, he's going to make a reckless attack as a bonus action against you, Chad. All right. With advantage, so. Uh, a 23 to hit and he now you the next attack against him has advantage okay and he's going to do does the reckless attack still work if they didn't use the attack action he has a bonus action to reckless attack uh, okay he's going to do 15 damage to you Chad Drink the potion. <laughs> I didn't. Even, I didn't even get the rage yet. He like started out like angry. He's super mad, and that is after he does that. He is going to attempt to move to right there, and it's going to be Mac's turn. Real life Mac. He appears from the portal, sees all this happening and this chaos over the few seconds that have happened, and he just turns to Chewie right next to him. He's like, what do I do? What should I do? And, like, pulls up his wand to get ready to fire off some spells. And he's just, like, shouting, for, shouting at you guys for direction, and he just turns to the doppelganger uh, deacon and he casts magic missile. Asks what to do and then does something and helps. <laughs> that's, what you, that's what you yelled to do when you want you came through. The well, game. he like he's like calling out for like <clears throat> advice, like in the chaos, you know. But it's like he he needs to act quickly, so he's like, "What should I do?" And then he just like quickly like boom fires off a spell while he's still like waiting for. Uh, for some instruction from you guys. And he is, let's see, he hits with three of those, so two times three, so six damage. Uh, 
and he'll actually cast that as a second level spell. So it's going to do another. He'll do eight damage to uh, clone Deacon. Pew, pew, pew. Yeah. And that will be Max's turn. He will uh, move a little bit closer to Chewy as well. Uh, Chad, real Chad, your turn. Chaos uh, ensues. That, Chad like wipes the glass shards, the ice shards, from his face, <laughs> and uh, he 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 whips his uh feeling a little, actually for the first time in a very long time he feels cold, so he whips his his hood on, he puts his shades on because he doesn't want another shard in the eye, and not knowing <laughs> that this identifies him as a little bit different. Oh, very nice. Because the, cause he now has a hood on and he has his shades on. So now he runs in, completely oblivious of this, saying, I'm the real Chad! And he goes into a rage <laughs> mid-sprint, running at the uh, non-lit-up deacon. Because it, the logic went was sound in his mind. He's like, well, if this is a nightmare, like, why would the nightmare hold the light? You know, okay, like, sure. He wants to keep you in the dark, so he's just going after the deacon without the staff. Sure. So he's just going he's just going on a whim here and he's gonna start hitting um with two swings with a forty movement. Wherever you would like to be, let me know. I just kinda put you in the first spot I saw, but uh I yeah, actually that's perfect. Okay. That's exactly where I wanna be. Yep, swing Boom. away. Boom. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, those are definitely both going to hit. All right. So we got super damage. 56. Are those four threes? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that's uh, 12. Yeah, so 12 plus the six. Uh, yeah, 12 plus uh, 16. Okay. And uh, so that's 38. 28. Uh, 28. Uh, 28, yeah. And um, yeah, there's no bonus. I'm not big or anything. That's it. All right. One second. So you just run and like rage out as you uh, go and slam into the clone deacon and, and you are thinking that you're nightmare thought process through this and figure that he's the the copy and you slash into him twice and as the second hit connects he immediately uses his reaction and casts the spell darkness on top of himself and cloaks the area around you guys in a like fog of darkness i chose the right one i mean i knew it was the wrong one <laughs> uh, both of your hits still landed but centered around Deacon is just this black fog cloud now or not Deacon but this this Deacon and uh, it's just solid black and you can't see through it so Chad you're now in this dark cloud as well inside with clone Deacon so is it like an arena that nobody else can see except no it's like you clothes? or is it just it's like literally solid black. black you can't right. see yeah. anything <laughs> Cool, cool, cool. Got it's it. like you're in uh, fog, but it's just like total black. Does does the the, the does the fog slash smoke like have um some sort of like uh substance? Like, does it feel thick? Uh, like the it air? just like, feels... could I could I tell if my arm or fingers are kind of like out of it? You know what I mean? Mm, I like, don't think so. I think it... what I know, I wouldn't know. Maybe like if you could feel. Just imagine like standing in like a fog cloud, you know, like you don't really feel anything other than maybe no. like a water vapor, but this yeah. is more like just like a dense magical darkness. There's, I don't think there's actually really any substance there. It's just pitch black, you know, and while you're in it, uh, any attack you make has disadvantage on any target inside of it. Or like if you make an attack from inside of it, you have disadvantage. And if anyone from outside tries to attack someone inside of it, they have disadvantage. <coughs> okay. Makes sense. So as far as Chad knows, this now everything's dark forever. <laughs> or, he, or he got teleported into another another room. So as as you hit him with the second melee attack, he casts this spell and like this magical darkness like cloud like appears. So you would see like 
you would see it kind of like form around you. Okay. Makes sense. But like, I, I would think that would maybe expand at least to maybe possibly the entire room. Yeah, you have no I idea. I don't know though. Cool. Um, ah, get me out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Chad, that's your turn, and Chewy is going to move next. Clone Chewy, that is. He's going to. Uh, run around the statue and run to the other side of the fire and kind of stare at the wall for a second and uh, He's a, a big furry bugbear. He doesn't really want to uh, You know light his fur on fire But he thinks about it for one second and then runs back to the other side and just like leaps through and takes the uh, takes the damage from Deacon there Dang that thing has been doing some work, man. That's a good spell. Rolling eights helps. <laughs> yeah. All right. So he leaps through, and uh, as soon as he does, let's see. As soon as he gets close, he gets 10 feet away from Mac and sees a little spellcaster standing there and he's kind of like brushing the embers of burnt fur off of himself and he jumps up and does a like karate kick and kicks Mac in the head. Uh, 24 to hit. He hits Mac. Six damage to Mac. And Mac has to make a con save. For what? Because he got kicked in the head. He failed, and now Mac has disadvantage on his next action. The bugbear monk doppelganger will now pull out a crossbow and shoot large chewy the real one uh 16 to hit nope all right uh he fails and that's the end of his turn it is now clone max turn and he let's see if you're anywhere inside the wall of fire does it uh roast you at the end of the turn yep okay yep <laughs> interesting 10 feet of the wall, and since it's only a 20 foot diameter, anything gets roasted. Right, right, right. Hot, yo, it's hot. Let me see here for a second. Hey, Mac, you're hot. Can you, can you, you can see through the flames and like cast spells through it, right? Um, yeah. I it mean, doesn't say anything against that. Friend. Yeah. Cool. All right. So, Mac goes and stands more or less like directly in the center of the circle. Like, he, climbs up on top of the statue to get a little bit of a better view or vantage point maybe he looks and sees uh through the like licking of the flames that there's this darkness and he can no longer see chad who he was going to try to attack and he tries to arc a let's see a spell over the top of this darkness and hit deacon let's see what i, he, I what bet the he, he, i bet through the darkness I bet Mirror Mac won't use Ray of Frost. <laughs> I can't believe you figured that out. Um, He'll never use it. So he will actually pulls out this uh, glowing orb potion from his pack and tosses this potion bomb over the top of the flames and tries to uh, arc it and hit Deacon. Uh, make a dex save, Deacon. I mean, would he be able to see me through the darkness? Isn't that a pretty big radius? I don't know. He just hurls a potion. We'll 21. see if it hits. 21? Yeah, you save. So take, uh, let's see here. He didn't see you very well, and you easily dodge out of the way of most of this. Take five acid damage. 
And he, I don't know if you guys can see this very well, but he uses his bonus action. He pulls out another potion and he just begins to like chug down this entire vial of this like golden liquid. And he, it just like makes this Mac like a little bit sturdier. And he like stands up and he like does this like Hulk rage type thing and beefs up just a little bit. And he appears to be a little bit sturdier and stronger. And let's see if that's the end of his turn. I believe it is, so go ahead and roll your damage. Dang. Nice. Uh, so you see the heat just like start to get to him at the end of the turn, and he's like doing this like like powerful like suit up. He chugged this weird potion, and he's just like going into uh, some weird frenzied powerful boost. And the heat is, like, you can see it radiating onto him, but it doesn't appear to affect him as much as you'd like. And it's back to the top of the order here with uh, uh, Real Deacon. As far as we know, Real Deacon. So... <laughs> um... So talking is a free action, right? Yeah, yeah. So we can try to. So I'm going to try to skirt around this darkness area. Sure. Two, three, and. In which direction? Um, around to the right towards the chewies. So the bottom of the darkness, or around the top? Yeah, around the bottom. Okay. Sure. And. Where would you like to stop at? Um, let's see. One to the right from where that is. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to attempt to recreate the weird staticky noise that they've been <laughs> making. Okay. Uh, and, and try to uh, communicate with with Doppel Chewy. <laughs> okay. Uh, roll a performance check. Sure. <laughs> I like I like this. Twenty twenty. <sighs> okay. What are you attempting to communicate with this? Uh, I'm trying to like point him into the darkness, trying to convince <laughs> him to attack Fake Deacon. Okay. Um, you. <laughs> <laughs> you let out this noise that you are trying to like kind of copy the strange feedbacky screeching sound that you heard earlier it it almost sounds correct and a, a couple of the people on the battlefield like turn and look at you like wait what the hell is he one of them really quick and chewy actually does turn around and face you and looks like doppelganger chewy turns around and faces you and looks a little confused and sees that you're like screeching and pointing into the darkness and he kind of starts looking back and forth a little bit you you are unaware if you were successful in your attempt well I'm I think I'm going to hold my action to uh, uh, hmm. I'm going to hold my action to uh, to blast um, probably Mac actually fake Mac <laughs> okay with a uh, Eldritch Blast in case he tries to get out of the circle. Um, but for now, I, I'm not going to uh, to give away the fact that I'm not the fake deacon. <laughs> so you're Rope. holding your action in case of any movement from Mac? Uh, any movement out of the... Um, circle like if he tries to come forward through the circle i'm gonna blast him back with the order blast. sure um and i'm also going to try to give a like 
as the fake Chewie is like looking back and forth, like when he's not looking at me, I'm gonna try to give a wink to uh, to Mac and real Chewie. <laughs> okay. It it was partly to try to like fake out fake Chewie. It was also partly to identify which one was fake Chewie. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, Although I'm guessing his fur is pretty badly singed from jumping through the fire. So. Correct. You can. It seems like you can tell. And now that it kind of like turned around and reacted to your strange language attempt, uh, you can you can easily identify which one it was. Um, it's now Clone Deacon's turn, and he is going. Oh, if I can grab him without grabbing Chad. He's going to sneak out the back of the darkness and let me see what he can do. Oh yeah. Uh, at the beginning of his turn, any ally that begins their turn in within 10 feet of him uh, gains 1d6 temp HP. Doesn't look like there's That's any me. allies. No, no, no. Uh, I'm his ally. Any enemy within 10 feet of him takes 1d6 radiant damage. Hey, man. Oh. That's weird. Chad, take uh, 6 radiant damage. That's the maximum. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's going to sneak out the back of this darkness, uh, take a look at where he's at, and then he is going to... Let's see... Take a bonus action and heal Mac, his Mac, for some damage. And he will try to arc a little bit of an Eldritch Blast around this, around this fog cloud and try to hit uh, his rival Deacon here. <laughs> uh, 11 and a 15 15 hits okay so that's just going to be 1d8 so take 5 and you are pulled 10 feet closer to him guess we'll go with right there And that is the end of Clone Deacon's turn. It's Chewy. Alright. I'm debating on something. Sure, take your time. A lot of uh, complicated stuff going on. If you guys have any questions or anything, feel free. No. Not going to try it this time. Uh, I'm just going to straight up and attack Chewie. Move up, move up five feet and attack him. Sure. Go for it. I'm going to use... Okay. Serpentus with... And use one key point for death strike. Okay. Uh, as you enter Doppelganger Chewie's range and attempt to attack, he uses his reaction to make an opportunity attack against you. You can do that when I enter? Yep. Okay. I know. It's not fair. Ox. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, uh, I can say. 19 to hit. You yeah. hit. Uh, take nine damage, and then you can do the rest of your turn. So, if you haven't noticed by now, each of these, each of these creatures has their own set of special actions, bonus actions, reactions, and and so on. And they are definitely not like exact copies of your abilities. So they're like us, but better. <laughs> Exactly. 
They're like us, but controlled by a better mind. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, 14 to hit. That's going to be a miss. Oh, I thought so. All right. Unarmed strike. Mm-hmm. Unarmed strike. 22 hits. Oops. Get rid of the... Don't count that three. Okay, so just seven. Yeah. Sounds good. The death strike is only if I... When I use my... Uh, Kinsey weapons. Okay. That's what I used for the first attack. Is what I had. Okay, I see. Cool. <coughs> um. Yeah, you you hit him with for seven. He uh, he like kind of like he hits you with that opportunity attack, and it kind of throws you off balance a little bit and makes you miss with your first couple swings. But then he quickly dodges out of the way of those, and you you cut him with one of your unarmed strikes real quickly. When he's uh, kind of showing off, dodging a little bit, and you kind of backhand him a little bit and get him. Anything else from Chewy? No, that's it. Okay, it's going to be the clone of Chad's turn. And he's going to... Let's see... I think he's just going to rush straight through the darkness and try to come out the other side and find Deacon. <laughs> and he gets, like, to the edge of it, and he's, like, still standing in it and just starts swinging. And he's going to take an attack on Deacon. Since he's standing in the darkness, would he have disadvantage? He does, yeah. <laughs> This is very much reckless Chad uh, movement here. Just going right for it. He does have disadvantage. He's going to just regular multi-attack you. So first one is a 13 with disadvantage. So nope. 13 miss. Okay. And second attack. Uh, let's see. It's a 21 and a another 13. So... Those both miss. He's going to take his bonus action to reckless attack. So this one has advantage, but it's canceled out. So just normal, normal vantage. Uh, that one's going to be a 20 to hit. Yep. All right. And 2d6 plus 6. So 14. And that is the end of his turn, and it's going to be Mac up next. Good guy, Mac. Sees Chewie's getting harassed here, and he's going to try to help stop that. Did he casts Prestidigitation. Yeah. <laughs> he, he casts Phantom Steed. No. <laughs> um, he is Can going we trade to... trade our Mac for the other Mac yeah. who's actually doing things? <laughs> Oh, that would be that would be quite awesome if you could. Unfortunately, <laughs> um, let me see yeah, here. Strike a deal with them. <laughs> we'll give you a better life than this. <laughs> and then to trap our Mac here. Let's see. It's a win-win. Okay, so he is going to cast Crown of Madness on the fake Chewie. So fake Chewie has to make a wisdom save. Which he fails. Oh my gosh, you guys are actually going to be excited. Your Mac is going to do something really sweet. So he starts doing this like big crazy movement with his wand and this like almost blood red like magical bolt starts whirling out of it and it just forms into this like rusted metal crown that sinks itself down onto doppelganger Chewie's head and then like squeezes in and like seals itself onto his head and you see doppelganger Chewie's head just go like zombified his eyes glaze over and he just becomes like a stiff like 
zombie and he is just at the control of Mac now and he is now charmed by Mac and Mac points back at the um, doppelganger deacon and the Chewie just turns around and prepares to move that way and that will be Mac's turn and it's over to real Chad your world of darkness okay. Real, real Chad is just gonna try and like desperately grasp at the guy who like took him here. It was like just five feet away, so he's just gonna like, run like diagonally forward until like he. Okay, you yeah, you out. just you just run diagonally forward and you like would bump right into the back of uh, other Chad. That's funny. So what I so what I know that this is other Chad just by touching him. Uh yeah, I think when you run into him, you like run into his back, and it's like, you you feel like the tail, and and you, you're like, oh my gosh, I just ran into myself. Okay, well knowing this, I think I would uh, steer more towards like where the guy would go, like opposite, like if he were to run away from me, but not obviously into Chad more. Okay, Trying so to... which yeah. direction, left, right? I would go. I would go left. Okay, so you're, to chase him. you're gonna run out this way, and you pop out of the darkness, and you're like face to face with the clone Deacon. Okay, <clears throat> surprised. Uh, Chad <laughs> is going to just just like whip out his weapon and just start wailing at him. Yeah, sure. Make sure that he doesn't uh, have anything to say about that here. My goodness. Uh, that's going to be three hits. Roll your damage. All right. Uh, let's see. All right. Seven plus uh, 12. 19 plus six. That's 25. Plus twenty four. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's it. Twenty five okay. was twenty four. Forty nine. So when you start just wailing on this deacon, you start to like cut through him, and you hear him like let out that shrieking, like feedback fuzz noise again, and he <clears throat> holds up his uh, like spell casting focus and the owl familiar that is kind of following him flies up in the air and the ruby from the scepter and the statue begins to glow and it shoots this bolt of like red light and it goes through deacon and this clone deacon like absorbs this light and just explodes in this wall of like golden red light and you see the the energy from this explosion go across and into the doppelganger chad <clears throat> and the doppelganger deacon appears to be gone and the doppelganger chad uses its reaction uh, if an enemy goes down he can charge attack whoever killed them so he immediately charges up to 30 feet at you and then attacks you so did he get hit by that like golden red stuff or... it went into him he didn't seem to affect him at all uh well <laughs> i can't really tell you what it did okay you're fighting nothing super good chad. for us I'm sure. <laughs> super chad chad um so 18 to, 18 to hit with his charging attack on you chad yeah I hit. all right take 10 slashing damage so take five damage and then you are knocked prone okay it is still your turn if you have any anything else you want to no, do i went for the triple so i didn't get to have a chance for my bonus so i'm just on the ground i think i got the right one guys i mean i hope <laughs> a regular Regular Deacon doesn't gurgle like it as some sort of weird mechanical thing. <laughs> you can still use Not your usually. your movement to 
It, it takes half of your movement to stand up from being prone. Oh, well, then I'll definitely just stand up. Okay. And just, like, wipe myself off and be like, I'm the real Chad. <laughs> this guy's real bad. Very nice. Um, does the uh, darkness from the other deacon go away? It does. Uh, if I can click on it. There we go. Yeah, it's gone. So we don't have to deal with that. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the end of Chad's turn. It is Clone Chewie's turn, who is under the effect of the Crown of Madness and is being directed to attack an enemy of Max choosing. So Mac shouts out to attack Evil Chad. No, have him attack Evil Mac. Run through the no, fire. No, no, no. <laughs> he runs up, gets 10 feet away, and he will use his monk multi attack action on Evil Chad. Uh, 10 to hit, that's going to miss. 19 to hit, that's going to hit. And a 20 to hit, that's going to hit. Crap, he's doing better than me too. <laughs> he's going to do a total of 11 damage after rage resistances to Chad. And at the end of his turn, Doppelganger Chewie's going to make another wisdom save to try to break free from the Crown of Madness. Uh, 15. He breaks free this time. Oh, well. Got a couple swipes. Got some free damage out of it. Mac did something semi useful, right? And it is Clone Mac's turn. He begins his turn inside of this fire and kind of surveys the battlefield again. He sees that Deacon, his Deacon was uh, apparently killed, and he thinks it's probably time for him to try to exit this fire. So. Uh, Deacon, were you still holding your action? Uh, I don't remember I if you've haven't... taken a turn since then. Um, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> I, I don't think you did. I, don't remember you I think that you were still doing that. He's going to try to jump out like yeah. this way, sideways. So I don't know if you want to try to blast him like back 10 feet or... Um, sure. Which way is he going? To the left. So, like, I guess as soon as he moves, if you're ready, you, you can, like, blast him, like, maybe to this square here. If you hit. Sure. Okay. Cool. So the second he tries to move, you Eldritch Blast him and see what happens. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. You, oh, yeah. you hit him with that. So he gets launched back and hits the wall of fire. So... He'll take the three force damage from your Eldritch Blast, and then you can roll your fire damage for the wall. All right. And again, it uh, it damages him, but it doesn't seem to be, like, as much as you hope. And he pops through the wall on the other side and runs a couple feet, and he looks like he's preparing another sort of attack of some sort and let's see he will use his action to throw another potion bomb and this time he'll throw it directly in the center of all of you oh. so everyone in that area make a deck save I have advantage because I can see it coming, right? Um, it's behind you, and you, it, yeah, it's behind you, and you're attacking someone else. I don't know if you could count that as seeing it, but if you it's when things nearby aren't as they should be, so I guess if it counts as nearby, I guess you. It's I don't know how you guys want to argue it, but. <clears throat> it's I mean, it's fine if you want to have advantage on it, I guess. Um, generally, there's not really any facing in terms of. I, I yeah, I understand. I just uh, 
Well, you you can have advantage on yeah, it. It's plus fine. Plus, I'm facing like west, so like I'd still see him in the corner of my eye doing something. Um, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> so then seventeen. Okay. Yeah, you you all save, so you're just gonna take half damage. So take uh, three acid damage. And Mac, like way, what's that? The way I've always heard it explained or explained it for others is that like you're kind of you're not just like standing static. You're kind of keeping an eye on everything. On yeah, I understand like that. There's not any facing or anything. I just I don't. It's it's not worth getting into. I think like having advantage on. Uh, saving throws to like dodge a grenade type of a thing i just don't see how a danger sense would work on that sometimes but i get it in 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 this spot it's fine um so he's going to use his bonus action to chug another oh. potion and he gets a little bit more sturdy and and burlier and he beefs up a little bit more and mac kind of looks like he's gaining power uh, and then he will also, let's see, he was reduced to 50% HP by all that fire damage and Eldritch Blast that he took. So his villain trigger is going to happen, which is one of the special abilities that these things have. The red uh, ruby scepter glows and shoots this bolt of light into him. And he gains power and he casts a spell and he casts uh, Enlarge on Chewie. Chewy gets real big. Doppelganger Chewy, that is. Uh, and that's the end of Clone Max turn. It's back to Deacon. Cool, cool, cool. So I don't like where I'm standing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yep. I think because that's, that's Doppel Chad there next to me, right? Correct. Yeah. Cool, cool. So I'm going to take a disengage action. Yep. <laughs> and move 30 feet towards Chewy and Mac. Okay, that'll put you right there next to him. Yep. And as a bonus action, I'm going to spend some of my healing light on myself. Okay. <laughs> Go for it. Because I'm getting hurt. Um, hmm. I think I will do... <coughs> I'll go ahead and use 3d6, I think. Sure. Fifteen, very nice. That helps me feel not as dead. Is that right. uh, it from you? Yep, that's all I can do. All right, uh, would be Clone Deacon's turn. He is dead. It's over to Chewie. Okay. I'm gonna do a verbal conversation <laughs> reaction. Sure. Do you do you two? Still have any um, attack spells left? I just have my uh, cantrips. Mac does, yeah. Okay. He's got one up to third level spell slot left. And then all the Ray of Frost you can imagine. <laughs> Or or can't imagine. <laughs> All right. I activate the cube of force. <laughs> uh, nothing seems to happen. Oh, you got it. You see the the ruby rod uh, shoot a red bolt of light down towards you as you go to press the cube of force and you push the button and nothing happens. 
Well, there goes that. So I didn't. I never even got to do it. You can at all. you can still uh, use your regular actions and bonus actions and stuff. It just nothing happened when you tried to activate it. Okay, I'll just shoot giant Chewy with crossbow. <laughs> okay. You were waiting for that, weren't you? Uh, kind of. <laughs> Nat twenty, do I see? Yeah, at a mess. All right. Well, the the Nat twenty obviously hits. Roll your critical. I'm gonna use a Kinsey shot on one. Do another key point. Okay. Take my key. Take the key point off. Uh, and that'll do an extra D four. Nice. So that plus I gotta do a D four. There. So, so fifteen. Yeah. Nice. All right. Uh, <laughs> Giant Chewie has been uh, reduced below uh, his maximum, his 50% HP. So his villain trigger activates. And oh he, you see him begin to channel his key. And he takes this like powerful stance. And uh, you're not exactly sure what happens. But as the missed shot from the hand crossbow that you fired whizzes by him um he grabs it and tries to deflect it back at you and he will try to shoot that at you and that's a 25 to hit yeah and it's just going to be a d4 all right take four and then he resumes his martial arts like power stance that he took after his trigger activated <coughs> anything else from real chewy no well actually i'm gonna move four spaces away to the right and and up so i don't want to be I don't want to be, all this be a big target for one spell. Sure. So back to where you started from, kind of. Yeah, that works. Okay. All right. Uh, it's over to Clone. If you're my meat. <laughs> <laughs> the giant bugbear just starts running away from you guys. Like, <laughs> no thanks. Um, clone Chad. Leaving the squishy spellcasters on their own. Clone Chad just, takes his turn. I'm just taking a big fireball on top of this. <laughs> uh, he is going to just start swinging at uh, his rival Chad here. Uh, 12 to hit. No, I got 13. Okay. Uh, that one's a 19. So, first of all... Take 13 divided by 2, so take 6 damage. And then he's going to Reckless Attack you. And he got a 20 and a 14, so the nat 20 is going to hit. The Reckless Attack, you only attack once. It, yeah, but he has advantage. Right? Oh, for the advantage. Yeah, yeah. So you rolled a 20 and a 14, and the nat 20 hits, and then I was rolling the damage for that. Of course. Uh, so 9 plus 6, 13. So another thir uh, no, 15 divided by 2, so 7. And that is his turn. So it's over to Mac from your guys' party's turn. He does have one one big spell and can and all his cantrips left. Let me see here. He let's see. I think he's probably gonna run closer to Chewy, get about halfway in between, and then turn back and try to cast a spell. He stops for a second 
and tries to decide if he can get off a fireball in a good spot, but he doesn't want to take down Chad. So I think he's going to cast haste on Chad. So, Chad Supreme, you now are under the effects of haste. So you get uh, double speed, plus two AC, advantage on dex saves, and you get an additional action on each of your turns. An additional action. Which, uh, if you attack, you only get one attack, remember? so. And I get AC? Plus two AC, yep. Hell yeah, I need that. And your speed is doubled. 80 speed. <laughs> <laughs> also, you are you get an additional action, so you can take that to like disengage and then run away, and then you still get your normal action. So you could like, you know, disengage, run away, and still ranged attack or something like that. You know, you can you can do all sorts of stuff with it. Just keep that in mind. Um, that's gonna be Max turn. It is now regular Chad's turn. Um, okay, so there's something I want to do on this turn. Let's see, um, yeah, can I, I want to use the Manual of Golem. <laughs> oh, yeah, sweet. So it costs health, right? Did I send you how that works? I, I not sure i don't remember if i ever sent you the uh they like, told me about the it, stats uh, for how that works so you have to sacrifice one hit die so whatever size your hit die is roll it like a d12 or d10 i'm pretty sure it's d12 all right so <laughs> roll, roll yes, it. three nice so subtract three hp from your total health <laughs> And let me see if I can find a uh, a good thing here. You get a man. I need to like buy some premium assets on Roll Twenty because like when you type in Golem on here, there's like an elk. <coughs> and some buckets there's like no good <laughs> there's nothing good on here for like actual no bucket creature man. uh so all right this will be your golem it's like a little hell yeah target practice guy so you get a flesh golem assistant that is summoned to you made of your own flesh and blood that will act uh on the same uh same turn as you and you can make it attack all right um that's all it can so, do it's just a giant like flesh meat tank essentially hell yeah someone's got a tank um chad is gonna shout at all the mirror people and say hey you thought you had everyone mirrored well you forgot <laughs> about my brand new friend julio oh my god <laughs> <laughs> Julio the Flesh Golem. Of course. <laughs> it's exactly what I would have named it. That's perfect. Um, so with um it seems so, like more of a name for an owl than a flesh golem, don't you think? I don't understand that at all. <laughs> I don't get what you're referring to. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um so that was like an action, right? It was a whole action yeah. to, to sacrifice. But life. you okay, do have so. your haste additional yeah. action. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna use my bonus action first to to drink Max Greater Healing Potion. <laughs> oh my God, this is gonna be the craziest turn ever. Okay. Uh, yeah, roll. I'm for this turn. I just didn't have enough bonus action to do it. So you get your two D, whatever two D eight plus four. I can't remember. I can never remember what it is. It's a I, gr I Greater Healing that. Potion. Let me look it up. One D twelve plus four, two D eight plus four. I don't know. Forty four. Four D four. Plus four. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> Need to remember that. Two, three, four. All right. So whatever you got, add that to your. Six. 
to your HP. And then the fun part, roll a d100. Chad blows up. Wait, I'm just adding <laughs> more health than I have right now. I got seven. Yeah, I'm wondering if this would have been better to do before summon flesh golem. <laughs> well, it's too late Why for that now. <laughs> Well, luckily this health potion heals for more health than I even had, so I'm probably not too in too bad shape. Um, so what am I rolling from one in a hundred? Yeah, roll a one uh, d one hundred, please. I'm going for it. All right, here it comes. Sixty six. That can't be good, can it? Lucky number sixty six. Let's see what happens. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, oh, I, I oh. summon Satan himself. Uh, Caster falls <laughs> unconscious for one until the end of or till the start of next turn. So I get to finish my turn and fall asleep. You are knocked unconscious and fall prone where you stand. At least I summon oh. the golem first. <laughs> so Chad is. Knocked out and laying on the ground next to his golem. Uh, well, now it's Julio's turn. Yes, it is. Where he's made of your own flesh and blood, and he will go wherever you command him. Um, you you don't have to be conscious. He will just like naturally target whatever you would want him to target. And he um, just makes a basic like flesh golem attack. Can. I have him. His movement like... speed is extremely low, so oh, okay. if you well, make then... him target someone, he will go there, but it, he might not make it all the way. All right, was he like 15 movement? Yes. Or... Okay. <laughs> um, he's just going to, since he's already in range, I guess he's just going to like squeeze himself in between the two mirror people. <laughs> okay. And then uh, slap uh, Chewie's leg or ankle. Sure. <laughs> He rolls a 19, so 22 to hit. That's not bad. That's going to hit yeah. Gigantor Chewy, and he does 2d6 damage, so not bad. <laughs> Takes a chunk of Chewy, does 9 damage. Julio, 100% hit rate. <laughs> and let's see. When... The Flesh Golem enters Giant Chewie's uh, range. He makes a reaction and does an opportunity attack against him. It's a 14 to hit. Let me look up the AC of this thing. Monolio. I don't remember what Flesh Golem AC is. I'm hoping for that 15. Probably. It's nine. Like it's nine. <laughs> oh my god, what is this? <laughs> they're extremely easy to hit because they're just giant flesh beasts that are very slow. Uh, so he hits, but it doesn't do a whole lot of damage. Let's see. Yeah, 1d6 plus 5, so 7 damage to old Julio there. How much health does Julio have? 50. Oh, that's pretty good. So he's down to 43. And that is his turn. It's over to Clone Chewy, who, seeing the uh, very easy target here and the newly formed Flesh Beast, he repositions himself and tries to take advantage of his situation. Now that he's enlarged, he's kind of going a little crazy, and his villain trigger happened, and he took his martial arts pose and he gained a new move he can now do a stunning strike and he will try to stun julio no uh he rolled a three so that's a total of 11 <laughs> but it, that does hit <laughs> julio like ac though? of nine <laughs> you gotta get some plate mail or something so he does let's see nine damage and julio is stunned until the end of his next turn. <laughs> Julio. Julio needs a helmet or something. <laughs> uh, and so now he will take a bonus action to jump kick and try to kick Julio in the flesh golem head now that he's stunned. And that hits. Does an additional 1d6. 
So that's five. He's gonna go into town here, and then he's gonna turn around and try to uh, monk attack uh, Chad while he's knocked down. So he gets advantage against the unconscious target, and he's gonna make uh, a couple of punches against you. First one with advantage, total of 21 to hit. Second attack with advantage, 23 to hit. So that's two. We tax us dirt turkey gifts. <laughs> uh, so he's going to do 15 damage total to you, Chad. That's bludgeoning? Yeah, just punching attacks. Yeah, he's beating the shit out of me mm -hmm. on the ground. <laughs> and that is Clone Chewie's turn. It's down to... Oh, back to Clone Mac. That's exciting. Clone Mac is getting super pumped up on all these potions that he's drinking. And he's now going to try to wand blast... Uh, Let's see. He's going to move first. And he's going to try to wand blast Deacon. Uh, nat 1. All right. And then he... <laughs> then he... He shoots his foot. Does, yeah. does his wand blow up in his face. <laughs> uh, uh, you you would expect that from, from your Mac, but this one is a little bit more composed, and he just... Uh, Kind of like shoots it off and it just arcs into the ground and fails. Uh, he well, then chugs another potion with his bonus action and he just gets even more and more uh, bonus and powerful. I don't know how to explain what's happening here. I will just tell you guys. Every bonus action that this Mac takes, he chugs one of his like super potions and he gets a plus one boost to his damage and hit for 10 minutes and it stacks. So he's up to plus three now. Um, and then he, he has like unlimited. He's just yeah. If he if sackful. if left alone forever, he could just get like infinite bonus. We couldn't disarm the sack from him. <laughs> Try to kill him. <laughs> um, and let's see. I think that's all he had. He doesn't have multi attack, so he can't do another attack. So yeah, that is clone Mac. It's back to real Deacon. Uh, okay, so hmm. one, two, You guys are doing great so far, by the way. I know that this is complicated. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this. I know it's kind of crazy. I think this is going super well. I'm really into how this is all working out with the kind of super boss fight thing, but you guys are doing great. So I'm going to try to move two spaces below Julio. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And hopefully I'm at an angle where I can elk blast fake Mac back into the fire. <laughs> ah, okay. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, go for it. Maybe not. Oof. Double 10. Uh, you guys now see that Max AC is 13. And it does not work out. Cool. <laughs> um, Any bonus actions? Anything? Yeah, I'll, I'll use I'll use two of my healing light to heal Chad a little bit. Okay. So hopefully, keep him in this a little longer. All right, Chad, get to uh, nine HP. Ooh. And my 
that's it. Okay, Just one second. Some audio stuff going on. All right. Um, end of Deacon's turn. It's over to Real Chewy. All right. I'm probably going to regret this. Awesome. <laughs> I run up to fake Mac. Okay. I got. 40. I don't have forty. I have forty-five movement. Okay, so let's see, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, forty. Yeah, let's say you can make it. Sure. Spend a key point. Okay. Actually, right, so a couple key points. Sweet. What you got? Um. Using the. Death strike for my attack with my staff. Mm hmm. Is that, uh, that Tw should hit. 25 definitely does. All right. Roll the damage on that. Seven. All right. And then I'm going to use the key point. I use my other unarmed strike for, okay. for my other attack, and then I'm spending a key point for two more strikes sure first one hits second one hits third one hits there we go all right uh you so you fire off these three unarmed strikes uh the first two you smash into him and he just like is ground down into the ground and he's like on one knee and he's just like a bloody mess and you can tell that your next hit is gonna take him down. How do you how do you wanna finish him off? Um pun him over a field goal head first. <laughs> okay. So you you spike Mac into the ground and kill him. And he let's see, the red light from the ruby scepter kind of kills him and and he explodes into this uh, ball of light and as he dies uh clone chad takes his reaction and charge attacks you uh nat 20. Oh. That is, let's see, so it's going to be 4d6. Plus, so take 20 damage and you are knocked prone. 